Okay, so I left off in the last video on example two, and we were on part D, and I was just getting starting um, to do the f divided by g function. So I started it by writing f of x over g of x, the f function divided by the g function. The f function is 2x minus 1. The g function is x squared plus x minus 2. So I have this function right here. And so when we look at this problem here, um, we can't simplify this at all. If you tried to um, simplify it, you would factor this denominator and you'd get x plus 2, x minus 1. But that does not cross out or reduce with anything up here because this factor is not the same as that one. So we can't um, simplify this. If we could, we would. So leave alone, the leave as is. We do need to make sure that um, we state the domain. What can x be? What can x be? In this case, what can x be? With this denominator here, we know that we don't want this denominator to equal 0. So we don't want it to equal 0. What would make that denominator equal 0 is if we had the values of x equals negative 2. We don't want that. And we don't want x to be equal to um, 1 because that would make that denominator 0. So if I were to graph this on the number line, I had to graph this out because it tells me how to do my air rotation. There's negative 2 and there's 1. X can be pretty much anything, but it can't be negative 2. So I would shade in all this, but I would leave the negative 2 open. It can be any number between negative 2 and 1, but it can't be 1. And it can be anything greater than 1. So my domain would be from negative infinity to negative 2, not including negative 2 or negative 2 to 1, not including the 1, or from 1 to infinity. Okay, so I've done each of those problems. Let's go into the next example, and I want to go ahead and find, um, or give them the, the function f of x equals x squared minus 4, and g of x equals x minus 2, find um, the quotient. So let's go to it's like the last example. So f of g of x equals f of x over g of x, which is equal to x squared minus 4 over x minus 2. And unlike the last example, I can actually simplify this because if I factor the numerator, the difference of two squares, factor the denominator, it looks like these two um, factors reduce out. So I end up with x minus 2 is my quotient. However, when you try to find the domain, you have to go look back at your original problem here, and you have to say, well, x cannot be 2. So when I were to graph this, I would look at 2, and I'd say basically a number is fine except for 2. So I would chain all the numbers on the number line except for 2. So my domain would be from negative infinity to 2, or 2 to infinity. Okay. So go ahead and pause the video and try this next problem on your own. And I'm having you find the sum, the difference, the product, and the quotient of these functions, and then state the domain for each function. Okay, so go ahead and pause your video. Okay, so I went ahead and did the on your own video, and here is the um, answer for part A and B. For A, I got the sum to be this right here, x squared plus x minus 6. The domain is all real numbers from a negative infinity to infinity. The uh, answer for part B, the difference is right here, negative x squared plus x minus 4. The domain from negative infinity to infinity. And part C, I got my product to be x to the third minus 5x squared minus x plus 5. And the domain is all real numbers are from negative infinity to infinity. And then for part D, my quotient is right here. X minus 5 over X squared minus 1. And then the d domain, um, I look at the denominator and I see that X cannot be negative 1 or 1. How did I know that? I look at the denominator, X squared minus 1, the same thing as X plus 1, X minus 1. So we don't want that to equal to 0. 
So those two values would be negative 1 and 1. And so I graphed it, I saw that basically any number from negative infinity to negative 1 was fine, not including the negative 1. From negative 1 to 1, not including those values, and anything from 1 to infinity was fine. But there's my domain right here. Let's go to example 3, and we're going to add these functions together and let's determine the domain. So in part A, I want you to add the function. So I have f plus g of x. The same thing as the f function plus the g function. f function is the square root of, <coughs> and they made a mistake when they made this, um, when they printed out my note. This should be the square root of x plus 3 and the entire thing under the radical. That, look at that. And this should be all under the radical too. Okay, fix that in your notes. Um, I'll, make sure, I'll make sure to tell my publisher that, and hopefully they fix that in the future. So the f function is the square root of x plus 3 plus the square root of x minus 2. Okay, those are the two functions add together. Now at this point we don't do anything else because we can't add these together. They don't have the same um, value under the radical. They don't have the same radicand. So that's just our function. We just leave them as is. They're just like unlike terms. That's part A. Part B asks for the domain. So I'm looking at this specifically right here. And I know that x plus 3 has to be greater than or equal to 0 because under the radical, so we want to make sure under the radical is a value that's 0 or more. And we also want to make sure that under this radical, um, that value is 0 or more also. If I solve each one of these, I get x is greater than or equal to negative 3, and x is greater than or equal to 2. Now when I graph this, I figure this out, I look over here and we get some a number line here. I have negative 3 and I have 2. I want all the numbers to be greater than or equal to negative 3, so there is that. Now I'll the numbers that are greater than or equal to 2. And where do they overlap? They actually share value right here. So the domain is going to be from 2 to infinity, including the 2. Why did that work? Because if I pick a number from 2 and beyond, let's say I pick 5. When I put 5 into here, that's okay, because you can take the square root of 8. If I put 5 in here, you can take the square root of... 3, because 5 minus 2 is 3. That's fine. 2 would be fine, because if I put 2 here, that would be fine. And 2 here, that would be fine. Both of those radicals have a 0 or something bigger than 0 under the radical. Now, when I pick a number right here where they don't overlap, let's say I pick um, 0. Well, 0 will be fine here, but 0 is not fine there. What if I pick 1? 1 is fine here, but 1 is not fine there. So you want to make sure you find where they overlap. So the domain is right here. Go ahead and pause the video and try the next one on your own. And for some reason, they um, when they typed this problem out for me, they didn't mess up. So the square root is in the correct spot. Okay? So go ahead and pause your video. Okay, so on your own, I added the two functions together. I got this right here. And the domain is from 3 to infinity, and you can include the 3. And there's my work shown there. Let's go ahead and talk about the composition of functions. And the composition function is when you put a function into another function. So I'm going to go straight into example 5 and talk about what this means. Okay, so the notation for function, or the, the um, short notation, is this little circle here. Okay. So if you see this right here in part A, if you see f composed with g, that's the composition, that's the same thing as f for the g function into the f. So this g function into the function f. When you see that, what you want to do is you're going to plug in whatever g of x is right there. So now I have f, and what is g function? The g function is right here. So that now goes inside. So I get x squared minus 2x plus 6. Okay. So f composed with g, so here I have the g function. And I'm going to replace this g of x with the actual g function, which is right there. Now I'm going to take this and put it inside the f function. 
and that gives me 3x squared minus 2x plus 6 minus 4. That gives me 3x squared minus 6x plus 18 minus 4. That gives me 3x squared minus 6x plus 14. Okay, let's go ahead and do the g compose f function and enough space down here. So I have g compose of f. And what that really means is you have the g function, but you have the f function into the g function. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to replace this with this. So now I have g 3x minus 4. Now you're going to take this and put it inside the g function. You can put it inside right there. So that gives me 3x minus 4 squared. Put this, put it right into there. Minus 2 times 3x minus 4, and then the plus 6. That's going to give me 9x squared minus 12x minus 12x plus 16. Remember, this is the same thing as this. This squared is the same thing as these two times each other. Where my 9x squared came from, my minus 12x, my minus 12x, and plus 16. And then I'm going to distribute this. So I get minus 6x plus 8 plus 6. That gives me 9x squared minus 30x plus 30. That's, you know, that's pretty bad. Okay. So now I want to find what happens when I have g composed of f but has substitute the value in 1. That just basically means I have the g of f of one. What I can do is I can actually take this function, this function up here. I've already done this composition here, and that's right there. So all I have to do is put the one into right here and here. So I get equal to nine times one squared minus three thirty times one plus thirty. That gives me nine times one because one squared is one minus thirty times one plus thirty which gives me 9 minus 30 plus 30, which gives me 9. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and stop the video, and i only got two minutes left on this video, so I'm going to go ahead and stop the video, and when you start the next part, you'll have the answer for the on-your-own problem. So when you stop this video, go ahead and do the on-your-own problem, and then start the next part and check your answers.